What is up? Welcome back to Tomahawked. I'm your host, Rob Fox, joined as always by Dan Holloway. Uh, we were going to live watch a game on Wednesday, but that game was rained out uh, against the White Sox or snowed out, uh, allegedly. Um, I don't know if it's raining or snow. It was supposed to snow today, but who knows? Um, which is kind of shitty because one of the. I guess it's like two weeks before the All Star break, so it's not too bad. But um, one of the only off days we have in the first half yeah. of the season is going to get eaten up by that. So it's you know. a little. The only, um, I guess, upside to it this is already our second rain delay of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, is I guess because the Phillies game was rained out on Thursday, um, that nuked one of our only off days for like the first month, month and a half. So we kind of, I guess, get that back with the with the White Sox rain out. But yeah, it's going to eat us up later. Uh, the silver lining of that, though, uh, which again sucks because A, I had them in a parlay. The odds were the as about as big as they could have been. I think the Braves were like minus 380 to win. So it wasn't necessarily a valuable leg, but it felt like with Strider on the mound of leg, that was for sure going to hit. Mm -hmm. But um, now have a not necessarily big but interesting and fun weekend series against the NL champs, the Diamondbacks, uh, in Arizona, I believe. Now Strider Stark gets pushed back. Everyone gets pushed back. So our top of the rotation is lined up against their bottom of the rotation. Should be interesting to see how we handle a good team facing the back of their back of their rotation. Kind of like a potential like wild card matchup or first round if we get a buy and they don't yeah. you know we face the back of their rotation type of situation yeah it should be interesting to see this um you know it's been the performance has been okay so far this year nothing to scream about i'm 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 glad with the starting pitching so far mostly good um strider had some issues i, I don't know that he's found his efficiency yet i mean that that I don't know how you even say the dude's name, Crotchet, Crochet, the yeah, yeah. guy from the White Sox that pitched, um, was very efficient by throwing, and so was Reynaldo Lopez, by the way, Yeah, by throwing uh, fastballs right under the hands, basically. Good day to do it. I mean, it's like, yeah, any day is a good day to do that. Yeah. Right? So what it generates is a lot of weak contact early in counts. Um and pop ups and 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 soft ground balls, which I think could really help Strider. Like I, I really feel like when he figures that part out and has a little more command of the inside part of the zone, it's going to be a real problem for folks. Yeah. Uh, but he doesn't have that yet. Charlie Morton looked great. He's a thousand years old. He doesn't care. Um, <clears throat> Renaldo Lopez looked great. Um, Both White Sox starts, but yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, Max Fried. I don't know why they pulled him so early. They maybe. There's some conversation about how bad that umpire was, and we're not gonna. <laughs> I mean, that was the worst missed call I've ever seen in my life. Like, I, I've seen a lot of bad calls. I think I forget who. Maybe it was Fangraphs does the worst calls of the year every year, and like, I think I I don't know how you top that on opening weekend for balls and strikes. Yeah. <clears throat> um. But yeah, Strider looked good in his start. Still, Strider looked, looked good. I think the main thing with Strider that I'm still worried about is like you said, um, he was and dude, this is kind of like a dumb thing to say because like he's because he's fantastic, but he was kind of like same old Spencer Strider, where it's a struggle to get to the sixth. Yeah. Um, for five innings, he's more or less untouchable, gave up two runs, which is fine. We won the game. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's not – it's it's so difficult for him to not throw a 20-pitch inning, I feel like. Yeah, he gets a lot of swings and misses and a lot of – so when you miss middle, high, or away um, – or even if you hit, even if you hit your spot, but it's a foul ball, um, or the guy makes contact, it's typically a foul ball, right? Yeah. They're either late on it outside and they foul it off to the right or left, or it's high and they foul it back or off to the side or something. But again, when you put that ball uh, just under the chest on the hands in the strike zone, high and end like that at 100 miles, 97 to 100 miles per hour. We're seeing it all over the place in the league the last couple of years. You can, yeah. People can't hit that shit. There's a couple of dudes in baseball that can hit that pitch, uh, and uh, it's two of them are on our team, Acuna <laughs> and, and Michael Harris. Yeah, Most people cannot hit that pitch, and it turns into weak contact early in counts. I think that's really something that he needs to 
to start focusing on a little bit more. It seems like with him, too, one of the reasons I think his pitch counts get high and he goes deep into a lot of counts is that um, this is totally just feel. I'd have to look up the stats, which there are stats on it, but it feels like it feels like he always has like a pitch per at bat that is a totally obvious ball. Mm. You know what I mean? Wasted, like, yeah. Completely so, wasted. Back in the day in the 90s, people used to use that phrase waste pitch all the time, and Greg Maddox would get on to him and say it's a purpose pitch, right? Like you're setting up the next pitch, or maybe you're setting setting up two pitches from now. Right. Maybe I have um, – So for Maddox, it was easier because he's pitching to contact, I guess. But he would set guys up at bats in advance, to be honest. But let's just say within one at bat, two or three pitches in advance. So he would see the way the guy – swung at a low and outside fastball on an OO count. It's like, all right, he's definitely not going to be able to hit this. If he doesn't know what's coming, he might just take it in general. So he'll throw two more pitches, maybe balls, mm -hmm. right, and then throw that pitch again and get a weak ground ball, right? That's – and Strider's a smart kid, very competitive too. I think he can figure this shit out. So, you it, know. It doesn't I, even feel like he's – because you do see a lot of pitchers do it where they're just like, let's see if this asshole will chase it. Mm. I th it feels like one is still getting away from him every at-bat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like he loses a little bit of control or, or whatever. Like, because I, I don't think that he uh, – I do think he's too competitive. I don't think he would just be – like, I don't think he's going <laughs> to fart a pitch away no. in an at-bat. That doesn't seem on brand for him. I think he's still just a little unwieldy. And, you know, if you face – that, and that's that's really where the 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 I think a lot of the efficiency stuff comes in, right? Because if you face twenty batters and you have a wasted pitch every batter, one just one wasted pitch every batter, that's twenty fucking pitches. Mm, that's an inning at least that you're yeah. taking off the back end at yeah. least. Um, yeah, it's weird. It's it's uh, you know when when you right now he's got the highest all time. Uh, strikeouts per nine inning. He hasn't. Yeah. He, has, he doesn't qualify anything because he hasn't been in the league that long. Um, but I think he can learn some shit from Chris Sale, who is the le the leader all time in strikeouts per. Oh, nine really? Inning. Yes. Um, he he's got the highest K per nine inning ever, and this is a guy who, you know, before he started getting injured from 2012 until, let's see, until. 2017, so a good six-year run with one in the middle where he missed four or five starts, 200 innings every single year, right? Um, a guy that he, he, yeah, he's got a high strikeout rate, but he's still racking up innings like that. Yeah, um, probably a lot to learn from him, to be honest. Um, because, because it's it's just not like people are are squaring him up or that his stuff can be squared mm. up. So, yeah, man, attack more or or I really I think it's more control like control I, I, he is he is attacking a lot but yeah. he's attacking in the he's attacking in places where guys can foul the pitch off mm -hmm. if you bury it on their hands you're not fouling that pitch off yeah. you're either going to take it because it sucks right and you don't want to fucking uh have your hands ringing for the next two days or you're going to swing and pop it up ground it out whatever yeah um it's it's a like you're out he's got good out pitches now that's the curveball looks great at one start but the curveball looks great against lefties that's especially who it's for so that's good um, but yeah, I mean, he's 25, so actually, so I will, I'm going to look into this more, uh, in the future. Fangraphs published an article today about foul to whiff ratio for pitchers. Uh, and I think that's, that's probably something too, because again, it, it could be with, with Strider, it, it does seem like, man, they always get to one or yeah. Like I said, they, they, he kind of throws one 10 feet high and, and it's, you know, he wastes enough pitches or, or the batter's able to. To get just enough barrel mm -hmm. on it again, you you lose you leave the game an inning or two sooner than you should. Um, Sale looked great. I thought we didn't mm -hmm. win the game, obviously, but I, that's as happy as I could have <clears throat> possibly been with with Chris Sale. Um, I always forget because I don't watch a lot of Red Sox games, um, let alone White Sox games before that. That he's just like a skeleton person. Yeah, I mean he's six five and he weighs one hundred and ten pounds. I think <laughs> it's just... um, yeah he's he's it's it's a weird body. It is like it's just, it's just like his uniform feels ill fitting, mm -hmm. uh, but he was great. Freed, I'm not worried about. He's Max Freed, uh, and then Morton, like like we said, Morton and Lopez. Uh, they faced the White Sox, but Morton again. You know, you never know with Charlie Morton, so that was nice to see. Lopez, cool. I don't really care because I don't think he's going to be playing the whole season one way or the other. 
Uh, no, he'll probably be a long reliever after a couple of months, I would guess. Um, right. Which is, I mean, just get us. It's great to have though. He he comes out of the gate and has four or five good starts, and then you want to bring up one of the other guys, Smith Shaver or somebody like that. Waldrop maybe. Uh, Waldrop or both maybe. Yeah. Right. And then you go into the playoffs and you have a dude who you know for a fact when when you're coming down on these short rest days, you know for a fact Reynaldo Lopez can go out there and start a game for you and get you five innings, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's that <laughs> you, you don't see that on major league rosters that much because today the White Sox were supposed they got so lucky today. They were today was a bullpen game for them. Yep. They got really lucky today yep. because this team against that bullpen, they would have scored 15 or 20 Oh, my runs, God. That right? was another, by the way. So uh, we were talking before the show started. I made a quick bet today. You guys won't get to take advantage of it. Uh, hopefully it hits. Um, Juan Soto was plus money for mm. over one and a half bases. You know who else was plus money today for over one and a half bases? Uh, Matt Olson. Oh, yeah. On a bullpen game? Yeah. Come on. He's at least going to get walked once if and probably hit a home run to be honest in that like i I, yeah i was all over that obviously it got washed because of the because of the game uh which sucks also another thing that uh that blows uh sean murphy Mm. out for i mean i don't think they're gonna rush him back there's no need to i mean um trump is an okay hitter he he's what you expect out of a catcher hitting wise Mm -hmm. right probably gonna finish um if you gave him uh, 500 at bats, he would finish somewhere in the 230 to 240 range, I would guess. Um, he hasn't seen that many at bats. He's only got 100 at bats as a as a major leaguer, but um, very good game caller, very good defensively, right? So uh, that's nice. And then having Travis Darno, obviously, that's that's why he's on the roster is in case something like this happens. It's it's you know it, it's. Everybody's got their own strategy. Like, we're going to carry an extra bullpen guy, or we're going to carry an extra this. Carrying three catcher, well, we don't carry three catchers, but having three major league ready catchers on yeah. your uh, on your 40 man roster is something that everybody does. But no, I don't think anybody's got two starters. The quality backup that we I, do, this obviously. Is, it's honestly very interesting. I kind of think Darno was just like, you know, I'm. I'm Eleven years into my career at this point, as a mm. professional, like at the major league level, like fuck it, dude. I'd rather be on a team that wins and go start mm. for the Nats or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I, I kind of think that's where he was thinking because Murphy is supposed to be our primary for sure. He was the starter of the All Star game last year. Had a great first half. Well, he's other than other than batting average, he's better than Darno at everything. Yeah, right? he's a, he well, he's slow as shit. <laughs> so he's not – I don't know. Darno is actually pretty quick for a catcher. Um, very, he's actually – he doesn't look like he would be a great athlete, but he is a great athlete. Yeah. It's weird. I it's, enjoy how average looking in every single way. Yeah, he would have made a good spy for sure, yeah. Because yeah. he's kind of good looking but not too good looking. <laughs> he's like an average body, but he's super athletic. Um, but, yeah, he's um, – Sh- Murphy is better at everything else. He's a better – home run hitter he's way better defensively mm-hmm. and he's Although, got a, did he's you got see, a hose did you see Darno's uh strike him out throw him out last night yeah yeah that's or was that, that last night or two nights ago either way it was, uh, I, think it was I think that was game one yeah it was two nights ago because yesterday he came in after clinic yeah. hit for trump um god damn that was like from his knees yeah I, I didn't know he had it in him yeah well maybe he's uh maybe he's been working on it yeah but yeah i'm not i'm not concerned about that i mean it, it'll be good to get one of the problems uh, last year going to the playoffs, I think, was that Darno didn't have many at bats and they were trying to get him at bats in September. Yeah. Cause he partly because of Murphy, but also he was injured a lot during the season. So I think getting him going early in the year, that's that's good. And to be honest, Murphy only playing a hundred and ten or hundred and twenty games is probably not the worst thing in the world no. either as as a catcher going into playing because Long season after long. Now, he's not in Oakland anymore. You actually get to the playoffs now. Right, right. So it's like an extra 15 games a year if you're lucky. Um, I, and I, I like we said, too, Darno is, I think, one of our favorite uh, big moment batters. He is, yeah. He is. And he's also one of the better clubhouse guys in baseball. Like, I think very similar to uh, what's his nuts that just got a managerial job. Um, Stephen Vogt. Stephen Vogt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Darno is going to be a manager somewhere within two years of leaving Major League Baseball. Yeah, I, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, he, he's just he's a baseball guy, um, and it's good to have people like that on your team. I still think they kind of need a spark plug. 
despite having a bunch of Latinx dudes. Yeah. I think they need a – I think Jock Peterson would have been nice to get um, – Somebody like that, at least. There was a. Like you uh, need your Craig Council. You need your Jock Peterson. You know. Yeah, there was a uh, a guy on one of the MLB Network shows. Uh, I almost put this in the run now, but I was kind of like whatever. But I'll, I'll just mention it now. Um, who was like Mike Trout's going to the Braves by the end of the year? No, he's not. I was like, is that where, a spark plug? <laughs> where is he going to play? Yeah, I know, right? That's I mean, the, not that he couldn't unseat the combination of Kalenic and and. Uh, Duvall. Uh, Duvall and left, but I wouldn't replace Michael Harris with him. No, 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 no. By any stretch. I mean, younger, more uh, durable, uh, and he plays the position better, frankly. At this point, certainly, yeah. yeah. He, and, I mean, they're both great players, but come on, man. Uh, but, you know, shit. If we if they want to add him to left field, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll deal with it. But then, you know, the next note here is how the Braves are pretty much firing on all cylinders. Um, that... <laughs> that platoon of Kalenic and Duvall is doing pretty well. Kalenic currently the major league batting leader mm. with the average over 500. Obviously, it's five games, but um, he looks great. And Duvall's just doing Duvall shit. Duvall and Darno are almost like the same person to me. Just these like quiet, nondescript white dudes who will make contact exactly when you need them to make contact. Yeah. They're combined nine for 21 right now, which is a 429 batting average. Um, I doubt that's going <laughs> to sustain. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're – they're uh, and they both play really good defense. Cl- Clinic had a great catch the yeah. other day. Um, I, to be honest, man, I think he's going to be an all-star this year. I think through April they're probably going to limit his exposure to lefties, but I, I think he's going to be – I think the platoon will mostly be over and Duvall will be spelling people – throughout the entire outfield mm-hmm. in, a, in a couple of weeks, yeah. I think, to be honest, because he's this kid's locked in. Like, whatever they did with his swing, it isn't just – like, he's barreling the ball a lot more now. Yeah. And he's not he's not swinging stupid shit, and he's barreling the ball. Um, Dude, Kevin Seitzer is yeah. a fucking wizard. Yeah, I mean – Hopefully, he, anyway. He, it's, it's weird how mediocre ball players turn into the bit. Like, Bobby Cox was a hump when yeah. he played. He was like a middling catcher in the Toronto Blue Jays organization, and – um, the only, I think we've talked about this before, but there have been great ball players who are great managers. Um, Willie Mays was not one of them. He was a terrible manager. No. Um, Lou Pinella was a pretty decent manager. He, and he was a good ball, good ball player. Um, Dusty Baker, obviously. Good ball player. Um, great manager. Uh, Joe Torre. I mean, Joe Torre is an MVP. He, he was an MVP in what, 80, for the Braves, I think, or was it the Cardinals? I, I think know. it was for the Braves in like '84 or something like that. I think it was earlier than that, but it was. It might have maybe been it was '79. Like, yeah. If it was '79, then it was with the Cardinals. Um, but yeah, there's been some. Frank but, Robinson was all right. Mm, he was okay as a yeah. manager. Uh, but we, yeah, yeah, you don't see, you don't. It's it's way more common for just some dumb dumb to be a great manager. Yeah. Some guy that just wasn't didn't have the physical skills. Um, I still think that we need a better manager. To be honest, but whatever, we'll see. We'll see how it goes this year. Right. Uh, but everything else is going pretty well. Ozuna is like got three home runs already. Ozuna, yeah. So Ozuna's uh, pretty funny to me. Like he's he's just doing Ozuna stuff, and I'll take this honestly. If he wants to hit two thirty, barely walk, hit home runs, and slug over six hundred, like that's fine. Out of the DH. Yeah. I mean, he's on pace for ninety seven home runs this year. So we'll see <laughs> yeah, how it goes. That's- that that'll be all right. Did you see uh, the Fangraphs article the other day about how the DH is the only like the fifth best hitting position in the lineup for across the major leagues in the last two years? It makes sense. I mean, there's not enough there's not enough great hitters that don't play a position in baseball for to for yeah. to, to expect every team, especially not now that both leagues have the DH. That's just not yeah. Even I mean, when before when throughout all of major league history was the DH the best hitter on the team. It's it's really Rare. like I can't think of any time. Like Ortiz on the Red Sox or mm-hmm. I mean even Edgar Martinez was w- there with fucking, you know, Griffey and A-Rod and stuff, so he wasn't even the best hitter on the team. But those Red Sox teams had Manny Ramirez as well, right? I, as, it, on the tail end Ortiz was the best yeah. hitter. Like when it was more like Ortiz Pedroia. Yeah. I agree with you that that Manny Ramirez was definitely better than Ortiz in that like oh four. I mean that dude had fucking testosterone leaking out of his ears. <laughs> it's like coming out of every hole. For, um, in, for, in Manny Ramirez's defense, I don't know that he was ever aware that steroids were being put into his body. 
He's I'm he's not aware of much probably. Yeah, like um, he he they could have just been giving him something. Like if there's one person who's like I was tricked into taking steroids. Mm. If if Manny Ramirez said that, I'd be like I, I believe him. Put him in the hall. I believe yeah. him. Yeah, and there's uh like our our key hitters to to me our key hitters obviously Acuña and Olson Riley. Um but Harris is usually a good bellwether if the team's doing well or not. Mm. And um, he's he looks – this is the best start he's gotten off to so far. Yeah. Um, he kind of – remember when he first got called up two years ago, he kind of struggled a little bit. And then last year he got off to a slow start, had some injuries early in the season. This season he's come out full bore, looks good. He's seeing the ball well. He's walking more than before. Yeah. He's seeing pitches well. And he's still getting – he does not have a solid spot in the lineup. They've moved yeah, him around. Yeah, he's he's six or seven most of the time. But he's a uh, man. I think he's a legit candidate for MVP this year. To be honest, you think so? If, if, if he's he, a if he's a thirty thirty guy and has with that defense with with the defense that he plays, if he's a thirty thirty guy, Gold Glover, he'll be a Silver Slugger if he's thirty thirty. How do you not? Yeah, like, I mean, at least I, consider him. I, right? I think. W- who are the best center fielders in the National League hitting wise? Because that's who he'd be competing against for a Silver Slugger, right? Don't it doesn't it's not just outfield. Um, yeah, that's right. It's by position typically. So I mean the be- I mean like obviously probably the best hitting center fielder right now would be Julio Rodriguez with the Mariners, or at least you know potential mm-hmm. whatever. Um, well, Trout I, is still in center field, I suppose. Yeah, but you're not going to get more than 130 games out right. of him, so he won't qualify. Probably. And anyway, both those guys are in the AL, so yeah. it, it's really I don't think there's a lot of depth at center field in the National League off the top of my head. The Dodgers outfield is kind of whatever. Uh, Mookie Betts is a shortstop now, so he's not. <clears throat> uh, You've got Cody Bellinger with Chicago. Yeah. We'll see how he goes. Um, he blasted a homer, I think, the other day. Yeah, um, but you know who fucking knows with that guy. Uh, I, I hope he has a great season, to be honest. Um, but other than that, like in the National League, I'm looking at the top um, hit leaders so far. Michael A. Taylor's one of them. He's not gonna. Yeah, that's not staying. Yeah, that that won't be a thing. Uh, and then right behind him is Harris. Um, that uh, Korean dude from San Francisco. I don't know enough about him to say, but I don't think that's going to extend too far to the season. And then you're like Will Benson, Jackson Merrill, Cody Bellinger, Brenton Doyle. Eddie, Eddie Rosario's playing center for the Good Nationals Lord. right now. Good Lord. What? He's, there's, the starting center fielder for the Nationals right now is Eddie Rosario, that's which is wild. That's fucking insane. Oh, um, I have one, actually. I think Jazz Chisholm was the center fielder for the Marlins. He is, yeah. So that's a... Doesn't that, play great defense, though. He, no, but Silver Slugger he yeah, can challenge yeah. for, certainly. Uh, and maybe, to be honest, James Altman might be an out, outside candidate for that as well. That kid can fucking play. Um, but anyways... Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Victor Robles has been playing center field, but he's been hurt. Um so yeah, Rosario's been getting the starts out there. What the That's fuck? That's goddamn man? insane. That is I, pretty weird. That would it was bad enough watching him in left. I don't Yeah. Maybe center's his natural position. At, at one th- point, maybe. It's like some people track the ball differently. I don't know. But every, <laughs> anyways, everything else is going really well for the Braves, aside from um the weird start for Freed, which I'm not concerned about. And then, you know, Sean Murphy being hurt, that's not great. Um, but that you know, sucks. That's what it is. Yeah, I, I, the only, I mean, and honestly, we should probably be. We're three and two right now. We should probably be four and two. Had the game gone on today, mm-hmm. which is, that's all you want to do, man. Win series, win series, win series, win series. I don't yeah. care. I mean, sweeps are nice and everything, but I'm not gonna. I, I don't care about losing to anyone, once, no matter how bad they are. Like the White Sox, like that game last night. I was just like, well, it's gonna whatever. Shit, shit's gonna happen. And also, it's like fuck them. Thirty eight degrees there. I, I don't. I can't hold that very much against them. I am excited for this weekend series against the uh, the Dimebacks, though, in part because I don't have to watch the first three innings on my phone while I'm putting a child to bed. I really enjoy the West Coast games for that. Yeah. Get yelled at for giving Rory screen time at fucking 7.30. The blue light really fucks him up. He can't walk so good. That's his problem. It's not mine. No, the Braves um, are on. I don't know what, <clears throat> yeah. what this fucking kid wants. Yeah, I, I don't have any complaints. Um, the bullpen has been uh, fine. I, I felt bad for Pierce Johnson last night, honestly. Uh, he blew the, or he lost the game 
or they were losing, but they kind of sealed the game against mm-hmm. uh, Pierce. But he got dinked and dunked. I don't know if you watched that. Yeah, he looked good though. I mean, his stuff looks good. Yeah, he's. I mean, you know, his curveball was sharp. Yeah. Right. In a cold environment, that's good. That's a good sign. That means he's got a feel for it already. I, I think Which is you like it's unusual to have a good feel for your breaking pitches this early in the season. So he's ahead of schedule. So I'm not worried about him at all. No. He he I think he threw like uh in that inning <clears throat> I don't think he, I think he only threw like two fastballs. Like yeah. he was just letting it rip with the curveball. Yeah. I love him. I'm so happy we get a full yeah. season of Pierce Johnson. Yeah. And then uh Nutsack is looks like the old Nutsack of old. Yeah. I mean, he's got a 12K per nine, no runs, and and I think three appearances, maybe two appearances so far. Yep. He looks good. Mentor looks good. Just get um, a lead. That's all I care about. Get get, get yeah. to October and get leads. That's when we lose those games with the Phillies, right? It's yeah. fucking – they score first, and we play scared. Yeah, they're uh, – that – man – that's one of the things about having um, – I, I understand the argument, and Ryan Spader makes this argument all the time, that your best hitter should hit first because they're going to get 30-some more bats mm-hmm. a year, right? Um, but there is something to be said for having a guy that can get on base, like a guy who – a leadoff hitter especially who – it doesn't occur to him that he needs to hit, drive the ball. He's just going to get on base no matter what he has to do. That's his mission. And then steal the base. Now, Ronald Acuna has that ability. He's got a great batting eye. He has good bat control, and he's fast as fuck. We know he can steal bases. It's like, can Seitzer get in his head? Because this is an important thing in the playoffs, going into that first at bat in the playoffs and saying, I'm getting on base and I'm causing some fucking problems. You know what I mean? You do not need a leadoff home run. Yeah. Now, now granted, (laughs) Lo- love a leadoff it. home run, but what I like more is having the opposing pitcher in the stretch as early and as often as, as fucking possible, right? Yeah. So this isn't a talent thing or a, a hole in their lineup. This is just like, hey, we see the problem. Fucking nudge these guys in the right, right. direction because now you've got Albies heading behind him, too, who is a great situational hitter, right? Um, Albies is the kind of guy. And if a lefty's on the mound. Yeah, especially, right? Like he's going to drive the ball. Uh, he's been driving the ball. Yeah, he's, he's great. too. Right? Um, he's just great at getting the barrel on the ball. But like, it, it's as a situational hitter, hitting the ball on the ground the other way is something he can do from either side of the plate. So mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who's pitching. Now you're set up for that stuff to get a guy scoring position for you know your three, four, five, six, seven guys who are all fucking all stars. Right, <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, I just think playoff wise, I think it's a different ball game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is something that. You can do during the season. I th- pick a random game in April and be like, "Hey, this is a play. Today's a just tell everybody in the, the locker room. Today's a playoff game. I need you guys and like make it against make it one of these games against Arizona. They're yeah. a fucking potential yep. NLCS opponent right there, or or wild card, a yeah. first round opponent. Could, it could NLDS be opponent. could be either way, right? So it's like, okay, today's today's a fucking uh, playoff game. Every run matters. Yeah. Every one we score and every one we give up matters. Play like it fucking your life depends. Play like this is the last game of the season and try some of these different methodologies out. I think having that experience mentally going into the game, uh, Acuna going into the game be like, all right, I'm going to cause some problems. I'm not just going to fucking hit the ball hard. I'm getting on base. I don't give a fuck what I have to do. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to steal that second base and I'm going to, you know, do whatever else. And the guys behind him will fall in line. I think that could be a very good exercise to prepare for the playoffs. Cause I don't give a fuck about the regular season. Like I like, I love it. I'll watch every game. This oh yeah. Year. But that's, if we win 120 games this year, I don't give a doesn't shit. Doesn't matter. Win the, win the chip. Does it? Yeah. Doesn't fucking matter. They were talking about that. I was reading an article, uh, on ESPN this morning about um, the most fun teams to watch this year is just a ranking of like watchability per teams, and the Braves were third, and they were, said something like they're threatening for their uh, second time in their in the Braves' existence where they've won a hundred games three years in a row, and that first time was ninety seven, ninety eight, and ninety nine. And my first thought was like, yeah, those were really fucking frustrating years. Looking back, mm. <laughs> like. Not especially '97, because that '97 team might have been the best team we ever we yeah. had in the whole run of the '90s. During that run, for sure, yeah. Um, <clears throat> who who's one and two? I would guess L.A. and Baltimore. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I believe so. I disagree with Baltimore. L.A. though, I mean, I don't know. It depends on where you are in the lineup. If it's seven, eight, nine in their lineup, they suck. Yeah. But whatever, they got they, 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 they have the best was... one, two, three of all time. Yeah. I don't think. 
I would like to see the numbers on that. We'll, we'll, we'll wait till the end of the season. Hopefully everybody will stay relatively healthy and we'll get full seasons out of uh, uh, Betts, Otani, and Freeman. Mm-hmm. And I just want to see what the numbers they put up are because it's got to be a batting average combined batting average of somewhere around 315, probably 305 to 315 in I, that range. Yeah. I'd and probably if... 35 to 40 home runs each. Yeah. Right? And I... then 100 to 120 RBI each. And a probably 100 to 120 runs, too. Yeah. So it's going to be like – Late '90s numbers, yeah, from the Indians or the Red Sox or somebody like that, it's, right? Or the Yankees, maybe. It's just unfair. I, I watch a lot of Do- I end up watching a lot of Dodgers games because mm. you you know they're just West Coast, right? Yeah. So they're on after the Braves are on, and uh, and every was- other inning you're going to see a fucking generational talent bat, yeah, right? So it's like, how could you not watch those games? That I, makes it's sense. Just Mookie Betts. I think I was texting you last night. I was pretty drunk, uh, but was that last night? I was texting. Yeah, you? yeah, and I was just watching Betts. It's like. I don't understand how he's that strong. Yeah, he's not tall. What is he, like 5'9 or he's some shit? He's not tall, and he's skinny. I think he's 5'9, like 170, something like that. Yeah, he's 5'9, which means he's not 5'9. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, 5'9 um, in cleats. But he's got a, not, not just – so he definitely has rotational strength. He's mm-hmm. able to generate power in the batter's box. We've seen smaller guys do that before. I mean, fucking – uh, uh, Ozzy Albee is one of them. Although he his is more from putting the barrel on the ball. He barrels. But, at, does he swing a big bat? Too? Yeah, thirty five inch bat. Okay. Yeah. But then Marcus Giles is one. He was a tiny little fella, but he, but he like was a big power. Gorilla kind of. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Um, but Betts is mostly rotational power, but it isn't like the rotational power translates into every part of his game because he throws very well as well from mm. every position. I, I they, just put the catcher's gear on him and see if he could do that too at Dude, this point. F- fucking for real. Like, uh, what he else? probably like, pitch. He he can definitely pitch. Yeah. Right? Because he probably did that in high school. Yeah. So um <clears throat> yeah, we were talking about it last night. I think I think it's either him or Acuna is the best player in baseball. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I, it would be hard to to determine. I think Acuna probably has a higher ceiling but doesn't have the same kind of intensity and drive that Betts has I I think mentally Betts clearly Mm -hmm. has the edge over Acuna now granted he's also five six years older than Acuna yeah so we'll see well he's 31 yeah so we'll see but uh anyways yeah it's a it's a we're starting to get back into and look there 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 are always great ball players but there are some people that it's just like a joy to watch them play because they're so good. Yeah. Like Griffey, Bonds, they were like that. Like any time they were on. I mean, I know he was chasing home run records, but any there was a period, even when he wasn't chasing specific records, that ESPN would break into every Barry Bonds at bat. Yeah, just yeah. like, fucking knows. I mean, he's, he's probably going to hit a home run right <laughs> just now. Just going to do something insane. Um, I, but like Freeman's like that. Betts is like that. Otani's like that on both sides, mm-hmm. like pitching and hitting. Acuna's like that. I'm guessing um, m- my personal opinion based on what I've seen, Jackson Holiday is going to be like that when he comes up to the, the bigs. I mean, the ball just sounds differently when yeah. it comes off of his bat. It's a different sound that it makes. So it's we're coming back into an era, and I think it's like Kobe's second run after the Spurs bored us to death for a while. <laughs> it's like we're coming back into an era where it's like a genuine pleasure to watch baseball games again. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's just because of the rule changes. I think it's because of stars. I agree. I think there's great star power. I actually, it's honestly funny to me because it's almost like, uh, oh, speaking of tiny guys, Jose Altuve popped up on my Mookie Betts height search. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, um, yeah he's, he's – Altuve is going to fucking – he'll definitely have the most home runs ever for a guy that's five foot five <laughs> Ever. Because he's listed at 5'6", so and we know what that means. Yeah. Uh, but it almost feels like Betts is um, underappreciated. To be quite honest, mm. like it's it's and it's weird because he played for Boston and now L.A. Mm. Like he didn't he hasn't been playing in Milwaukee or something. It just he I don't think people really understand how insanely good this guy mm. is. I mean, he at everything, everything like he's a great base runner. He's a great he plays multiple positions and at an all star caliber at each one of the positions. And then he's one of the top five hitters in baseball as well. Yeah. I mean, remember in the 2020 NLCS, he robbed Freeman's home run mm-hmm. that kind of just ended that. I mean, he made that exact. He made the play right yeah. when he fucking needed to. It was a miracle he didn't punish us in, in 2021. He was held relatively in check. And I think, yeah. wasn't he the last out of that Tyler Matzik inning, the nutsack inning? 
Uh, yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, just, he's he is, I'm more scared of him than I am of anyone else at mm. the plate, I think, right now, when, when we're playing somebody. Like, he, it'd either be him or probably Bryce Harper. Is him, he? Harper, or Freeman. Yeah. One of those guys. Because Freeman's just so hard to pitch to. There's no holes in his swing. You can, you can get him out, but... If you miss by an inch, he's going to fucking – because you, you can get him out by jamming him up and in. But if you miss, he, he's going to – that ball's gone, yeah. right? So um, – and Harper, man, what a day for him yesterday. Yeah, no shit. He's the first guy ever to come into a game with no home runs and leave the game with three home runs. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Um, he's another guy <clears throat> that is like – Part of it is his intensity and how much he, he loves fucking playing baseball. Yeah. Like, he really, he re, like, that's how I felt when I played back in the day. So I relate to that a lot. Um, he's a, it's a, it's, I really enjoy watching him play. And I'm glad that he's playing first base now because I feel like we're going to get a 150 games out of him now instead of yep. whatever. He yep. hasn't played 150 games since uh, 2019. So is, no, not, is it not even, how many games? And he's, he only, he, he's only played 150 games or more three times in his entire career, actually. Uh, how many fucking games did he play when he won the MVP the second time in 21? Uh, 141. All right, good, good enough, I guess. He shouldn't have been the MVP, but whatever. No. Uh, <laughs> and then this weekend, uh, oh, well, I'll do a sponsor real quick before we get into the picks. We're going to make some picks. We do them on MyBookie. Go to MyBookie.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros to double your first deposit up to $1,000. You put in $1,000, they will give you a free $1,000. Uh, put in $50, they'll give you a free $50. Bucks. I guess whatever you can afford, they will double up to $1,000. We're running baseball parlay picks uh, all season long. I dropped a big one today. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I have one for this weekend as well. Have you checked out the weekend's games? There's a couple. It's not as – there's some there's some series or sets of series where you're like, oh, my God, there's like nine to choose from. This one, this weekend a little more muted, I would say. Uh, yeah, I think the Sunday – or the, I'm sorry, the Friday games are what I was looking at. Uh, Friday is what I, what I liked as well. Yeah, like um, Strider's going against – uh, the Diamondbacks against their number five guy, I believe, right? Four or five, maybe. Yeah, it's back into the rotation for um, sure. So that's a good one. Um, Lido's going for the Rays against the Rockies in Colorado. That's a good one as well. Um, they that that's I feel like that that's a pretty safe one, although we'll, you know, gamble safe. gamble gamble your own risk. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yankees, Blue Jays at Yankees. Um, Stroman's going for them. He's he looked as sharp as he's looked in his career in yeah. his first game. There's a lot of good games to bet on uh, Friday. A lot, I, of, a lot of decent parlays. Maybe split them up into chunks and bet them individually. I uh, the four I like the most. I do. I I I I might add the Yankees over the Blue Jays to this. Uh, but Dodgers over Cubs, Rays over Rockies all day. Uh, Phillies over the Nats, and then yeah, Braves, D backs. I love Strider going against the back yeah. of there. Rotation Braves over D back. I mean the D backs are good, so that could be that's a little risky, but mm. um, I like I like them to win with Strider. Uh, they win a lot of games. So Strider won twenty games last year, so they won a lot of games he pitched and he got credit for them. Yeah. But the year before, uh, they weirdly they won almost every game he pitched, whether or not he got the win or not. So yeah. they they have a long history of winning games that Spencer Strider pitches in. Yeah, and then then there's that uh, Phillies Nats game. Patrick Corbin, I don't know how the fuck he's still in Major League uh, Baseball. Yeah. It's like he had – what was it? Let me check. I think his ERA was six last year, if I'm not mistaken. He's terrible. And if um, Eddie Rosario is roaming center field. Yeah. His his ERA two years ago with 31 starts, like full seasons. His last, this is his last three seasons with 31 or 32 starts. 582, 631, and 520 ERAs. Yeah. Love um, that for the Phillies. I mean, it's – the Phillies are going to enjoy that. Um, he puts a lot of people on base. They have a pretty patient lineup. Um, and the only, the only concern maybe is that Nola's going for them, but he's not, I don't think he's going to give up seven runs in back to back. No. Games. Yeah. I, I thought that Nola was a little liber, but Nola's going to have some good starts too. He doesn't oh, yeah. lack in talent. He's just kind <clears> of <throat> not the guy he used to be. Yeah. Uh, and the, and also just the Nats are fucking terrible. Like we've already said, Corbin's pitching their second most maybe third most defensive, important defensive player is Eddie Rosario, who I love, but he has no business 
roaming center field. So that's great to me. And then honestly, the Dodgers are just a safe bet most days. Yeah, and then there's another game. Um, Padres at Giants. Keep an eye on this game. Not not for gambling, just if you're a baseball fan. Jordan Hicks maybe has figured it out at this point. Jordan Hicks, the guy who re- throws 103 miles per hour all yeah. the time. Yeah. So has been has had real problems locating um, his uh, uh, throughout his entire career, mostly as a reliever. He's gotten some starts here and there with St. Louis before, uh, and then got traded to Toronto last year and his whip went from like a career 1.5 down to 108 and in his first game this year it's 0.8 right Mm -hmm. um I'm really interested in it because Padres have a pretty decent lineup I'm really interested in this game in particular to see how he pitches in this game and if it's consistent against a better lineup than what he faced in his first start because there's nobody in baseball that has more talent or yeah has more talent than uh, Jordan Hicks, and he th- his first game was against the Padres, right? So he's going to go back, yeah, uh, and pitch against that same lineup again within basically a week and a half period. <laughs> yeah, if he can go back and and perform like that again against a pretty decent lineup like that, I think that's a good sign that he's made a turn in his career. And then the Giants are fucking like a real team they- because they've got Blake Snell and Logan Webb as well, right? Yeah, and then that other guy, what's his name? Uh, Rogers maybe is one of them. Yeah, I don't remember. They've they they have built that team. Uh, I forget their their uh, general manager's name. It's like Middle Eastern mm. something, but he builds really interesting teams. Harrison, that's the other guy. Okay, that's really good. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> man, uh, their offense is just okay, right? Um, I think they Solaire got, had a dong last night. I was watching that game for a minute. Yeah, they brought Nick Ahmed over from uh, from Arizona. He's not much of a hitter, but he plays excellent defense. So they've got good up the middle defense, which is kind of character. I mean, they've had Crawford for years there, so um, that's Crawford a, a Cardinal now. Yeah, that's so weird. Um, but they they've had they have good up the middle defense. Um, Conforto is back off an injury. He looks great. He didn't play last year really. Mm. Um, he looks fucking great. So they've got a lot of bargain dudes. Jorge Soler and Matt Chapman are the only two like stars in this offense. Yeah, like stars, people that are getting paid. But it's not bad. They can win. This is this team is as good as Arizona's team was last year. I think. Yeah, it's right? it's, it's a very fascinating roster building exercise. Yeah. And, but the rotation's great. Yeah, the, the rotation's, rotation's great. Yeah, like without that's not like a. Mm, I wonder what happens. Like yeah. that top three is fucking fantastic. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in the National League West. Yeah, and if the Padres, despite spending like three hundred million dollars on payroll, are once again not even going to come close to making the playoffs. They won't. They won't. They won't. I mean, you got to think. If you're the pot, if you're getting into the season, remember, Major League Baseball does this on purpose so people can decide their own fate. But you have more division games later in the season. Usually, the last like nine of the last twelve or twelve of the last fifteen or something like that games will be against yeah. division rivals. We don't play the Phillies again until July. Yeah, yeah, it's they, they do that do it like that on purpose. But <clears throat> if the Padres are like fifteen or twenty games out by august are they going to start selling people you have to have to at this point right yeah because it's you you've tried it three times with this particular model and failed miserably every single time Mm -hmm. right now we know they're not going to trade tatis jr i think machado would be the one to go yeah Um, because they've got dev uh not devers um bogerts bogerts yeah uh yeah bogerts and and tatis jr i think bogerts contract sucks so they're not getting rid of that one but i think machado is still He's one of the best third basemen in baseball. Yep. Um, as much as I hate that motherfucker. He'd be useful somewhere, certainly. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens. But, yeah, there's a lot of good games this weekend. Go bet them on, uh, on my bookie. There's good games on uh, Saturday and Sunday as well, but good games to watch more so than the bet. I think Friday is a good bet. I, I think I, Friday seemed like the best betting mm-hmm. day to me. I'll drop that parlay in the Drinking Bros Sports Facebook group. Join it if you haven't already. Uh, that's all I got for today. Yep. Fuck off.